to this week's issue of the TV and Film Review Podcast. I'm your host, Stuart Scott. Today joining me is, I think we can call him co-host now, uh, Liam Kearney. Is that a promotion? Hmm? Hello. Aye, I think so. <laughs> and also film writer, Kate McCall. Hello. Nice to have you back, Kate. Nice to be back. Very, very sorry about not not having a show last week. Um, a few scheduling conflicts meant that we, we couldn't really get enough people to do it. But we're back and hopefully better than ever this week. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so I think we'll start off as usual with uh, what we've been watching this week. Uh, Liam, if you want to go first, kick us off. Yeah, no worries. Uh, well, this week I have been watching the... I don't know if you guys watched it when it was originally on Channel 4 or Sundance in America. Uh, the Returns, it's like a French drama. People came back from the dead. Um and they kind of they didn't realise they died, so it's all in French with subtitles. I kind of missed a couple of episodes when it was first on, and it's now on Netflix to watch. So I kind of watched all that. So I kind of watched that in about a day because <laughs> um, it's just obviously with Netflix because kind of binge watch. I kind of watched all. There's only eight episodes that kind of flew through quickly. Um, so that's really good. Really recommend it to people. I think a lot of people can get put off because it's subtitled and you know having to read it. And I mean, you really do need to pay attention because obviously if you miss anything, you don't know what's going on unless you know French, of course. Uh, but um, yeah, really recommend it. It was really good. It's kind of got some kind of um, kind of interesting storylines. It's got a second series. Is it's been picked up for a second series. It was on in France a couple of years ago, and they still haven't shot the second series yet, so I don't quite know when it's going to come out. But um, mm. definitely recommend that for people. And ABC, one of their mid-season shows, Resurrection, sounds a bit similar to it. I was going to say, if, uh, if you watched the Oscars last night, every break, Resurrection, Resurrection's coming, Resurrection. And it just, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, and it was just like, this looks so bad. <laughs> Because, oh, yeah, um, yeah I, I watched um, maybe mm, two thirds of The Returned, and then um, I went to, it was, it kind of crossed over with when I was in Tokyo last summer, so I missed the end of it. Um, and was a bit, I wasn't really, you know, I didn't have that desire to go, you know, when I came back to go back and watch it again. It, I, I liked it, but it was, um, it was, it is quite slow. And, yeah. and like you mentioned, if you're not quite, it's not one of these ones where you can like, you know, do a few things on your phone while you're watching it because you will lose what's going on because you need to read the subtitles. But Totally. It made apparent how much I clearly like go on Twitter and that when I'm on my phone. Uh, when I'm watching TV, because I was just like on Twitter and then looking up and be like, I don't know what they're talking about. I know. Um, like, so yeah, yeah. Totally needs to pay attention. Um, yeah, I, I agree, it's slow. I saw it was on Netflix anyway and I thought, oh, you know, I might, I might go back and and watch it all again. I'd have to start again because I can't. Yeah. I'd, I'd miss all the little little intricacies and things. But um, yeah, it's. Uh, but the re- but resurrection doesn't. It's not. They're saying it's not a remake, is it? But it's kind of loosely based on the returned. Yeah, I think because I think it's a book. They're returned, so I think they're both kind of based on the same. Book. Ah, I right. could be wrong. Ah, right. I could be wrong. Um, I think the returned is based on it. No, I think The Return's based on a film. I oh, it's based on, yeah, it is based on a film, yeah. It, I don't know, The Return was quite, because it was quite slow, they had that, oh, they had that little boy, like that demon child boy, didn't they? <laughs> it was yes, just like yeah, really freaky. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. it was quite creepy, and, you know, they had, there was a serial killer element from what I can remember as well. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not sure what, Resurrection just looks a bit like, oh, a bit more soapy, a bit more like, oh, they've come back from the dead and it's all about, you know, the, more about the grieving process and fitting these people back into their lives. I'm not sure if there's a supernatural element yeah, to it I'm, at all. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure either. I think I read um, a, a preview, like mid-season preview, and they kind of said the resurrection kind of focuses more on the religious side of, like, you know, God and yeah. what kind of happens. The return doesn't really touch on that at all. They all seem to just kind of accept that these people have come back and yeah. and don't really make a big deal about it. But I think resurrection, like you say, is a bit more soapy and a bit more kind of what does it all kind of mean about God and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so, it's proper ABC, uh, isn't it? But... Yeah, oh, definitely. definitely. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'm going to, I must admit, I'll check it out just because it sounds so similar, but yeah, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as good. But I agree, it's slow, but you should definitely yeah, think because it's. It. Yeah. Yeah, I think it helps with Netflix as well, because you can kind of keep going. And like you say, there's all kind of little points that kind of later on all kind of feed into the same thing. The last episode, it just goes really weird. And, um, 
you know, quite strange and what makes you then kind of want to know what's what's going on. I was going to say, it makes you excited for the second series. Well, yeah, definitely. I can't yeah. wait. It's good. Um, so that's, so that's the main thing I'll be watching. Other stuff, obviously, with the Olympics being over, a lot of stuff's been back now. Um, like thank Grey's, I know, thank goodness. Uh, it's like Grey's Anatomy, but I'm sure Stuart will probably be talking about that. Scandal's back, which is good, which is probably fantastic. It's totally bonkers and just, uh, I don't really know what they're going on, they're just going absolutely crazy <laughs> with it, but it's good, it's still good, good, good pleasure. Uh, Parks and Rec is back as well, which is yes. hilarious. It was came back with an excellent episode. <laughs> it was, it was so good. <laughs> the bit with Ben and Larry, or Jerry, or whatever you <laughs> yeah. call I just, the whole kind of date thing was fantastic. Yeah, I really like the the beginning as well, where she's in the um, the radio station, and you've got the guy oh, from Pawnee and the guy from uh, Eagleton. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the bit where he says "scoff." <laughs> just, <laughs> did you just say the word "scoff"? <laughs> oh, yeah, I had uh, I had quite a few uh, words. Oh, <laughs> oh, me too. And. Um, that's probably about it, really. And then the mid-season stuff, obviously, just kind of checking them out, seeing whether any of them were any good. Didn't really Did think... Worth watching? <laughs> Not really. No. Um, I thought the NBC comedies about a boy was pretty much just the film in 20 minutes. Oh, God, really? Yeah. Um, with One Direction thrown in. Growing Up Fisher, the one about the blind guy, was terrible. <sighs> They picked the most unlikable child as the lead. I don't know how you can do that, but the child was horrible. And um, Mixology, I don't know if you guys watched that, the one, 10 single people in a bar or something. Yeah, I heard about it. I've seen, I've about... seen we did a review on it. Um, is it a reality show? No, it's a it's a sitcom. It's kind of, people have been comparing it to happy endings. All right. Um, so it's like 10 single people in a bar and they're all kind of meant to find love, but it's... You know, guys are making jokes about rape and all this. It's just not mm. funny at all. And again, it's waste in the modern family slot. Like, the Goldbergs or Trophy Wife would have been perfect after modern family, yeah, but yeah. instead they've put that, and it's just, I don't know what ABC, I think. Yeah, that's not, mm. that's an odd pairing. I, and, I, um, I, I was just going to say that I really like the premise for that, but, um, I remember way back in, um, or when, whenever the trailers were released and I watched the trailer for it and I just thought, no, it's, it's not going to be funny, and no, obviously it's, it's had bad, awesome. it's had bad reviews. So, but good premise, but shame. It's probably like a lot, lot of American or a lot of shows. They've got a good premise, and then <laughs> yeah. it just never <laughs> works out. Um, yeah, the only I wouldn't say it was decent. The only one I kind of liked was Star Crossed, which is on the CW. Um, I quite like the idea behind kind of what you're saying, Kate. It's got a good premise. Aliens kind of crash land on Earth, and it's about them kind of living with humans and some of the kind of so teenage. Are you making the neighbours or? No, no, no. It's like um. <laughs> is it like Roswell? Well, yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah, uh, yeah. They kind of get oh, okay. the the aliens kind of get integrated into the the high school, but I mean it's kind of typical CW. They've got a love triangle and all that, and everyone's really pretty. Um, it's just a, it's kind of a shame it's on the CW because I think if it was on another network, kind of the, like they've got kind of the kind of political and there's side of yeah. things and there's um a a. Ren- a a renegade group trying to bomb the humans and all that. I think if it if it wasn't on the CW, it could be a lot better. So mm. pretty people. I mean, you can't go wrong. With them. I know. Aye. Best thing about the CW, isn't it? Yeah. They do, but they just recycle the same people over and over again. <laughs> so yeah, well, as as the CW in this one, they've got like a. I think everyone in it has been in another CW show. Oh my god! They have totally just recycled them. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much me for this week. All right, Kate, do you fancy it? Next. Uh, yeah, I haven't really got. Um, like I said, I've been watching. Um, I c- caught up on like Parks is back this week and Community and um, and Modern Family as well. But um, the, and then it's just the stuff that I was watching last time as well. So like through Detective and things. But the one I did want to mention was Hannibal was back um, on. Well, it was back on Friday, I think, and I didn't realise it was actually on Friday because I'm pretty sure last series it was on a Thursday. And when I heard yeah. it was on Friday, I was like, oh, NBC, why are you putting it on a Friday? <laughs> Especially as they waited so long to renew it as well. Yeah. They put us all through hell, and it was like, just renew it, it's so good. And <laughs> I really, I, has it gone into, because I know they put, was it NBC, you did Dracula as well. Yeah. And I think they that was on on a Friday night slot as well. So whether they're just, that's where they put those kind of dramas now, I, I don't know. But... For me, Fridays just means they want to get, you know, it's been pushed off and it'll get cancelled and it's, 
you know, the death knoll of television. So I was a bit like, ooh, I have to put it on on a Friday. But yeah. but anyway, we'll see how, we'll see how the ratings go, I guess. But um, I thought it came back really strong. Um, I really lo- Have you guys seen it at all? No, I've got, I've got the um, first season stored up, but I've not had a chance to watch it. Okay, I've been well, there for ages, but I really fancy it. Okay, well, I won't spoil too much then, but um, it's um, it kind of picks up, well, almost, you know, straight on from where season one ended. And, it, you know, so the, the, it, the quality throughout season one was so strong and so yeah. high, and it just, you know, carries on from that, you know, season two just starts immediately. And it's quite interesting, actually, because it starts with kind of a flash-forward and so to like an amazing fight sequence and you're just like is this a dream what's going on and then it's like says like oh 12 weeks earlier and we get into like season two proper so we know what we're building up to now so that's really interesting how they're going to get there so um so is that going to be like the finale then is it i I presume so because it's um it said 12 weeks earlier so it's pretty much like saying 12 episodes earlier you know (laughs) so um but yeah, it's, it's a good start, and it's set up the, the storyline for season two. Um, so, and I think it um, cast really strong. So yeah, I take it Mars Mikkelsen's uh, staying on for season two as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone's back. Um, Hugh Dancy's back as Will Graham and um, Lawrence yeah. Fishburne's back. So I forgot Lawrence Fishburne was in it as well. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I, I love Mars Mikkelsen. He's a superb yeah. actor. Yeah, yeah, he's really good in this. And so if you haven't seen any of it, Stu, it's just it's. Yeah, I'm, I'm dying to get started on it. I've just other things have popped up that I really want to see. And, yeah, it's yeah. definitely worth watching. It's by the guy who did Pushing Daisies, I think. Uh, oh yeah, Brian, Brian Fuller. And yeah, um, it's just shot. I mean, well, another tip for you is don't don't eat while you watch it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, David was telling me that as well. Yeah, because it's it's. In, in, in one sense, it's like proper food porn because he's making all these amazing dishes, but. It's like human meat. <laughs> so, uh, nice. And also the serial... <laughs> the other funny thing about it is the, the serial killings in it are so horrific and grotesque and they get away with a lot for a network television yeah. show. But you're just thinking of all these like horrendous serial killings happening in the same town, in the same state. <laughs> it's like they must have the worst serial killers in that, in that part of America. But um, yeah, it's... Uh, season one's kind of... Um, it's a little bit procedural, but but interesting as well. Like really interesting cases. But then you've got the main arc as well. So, um, and yeah. so I'm not really sure the way they started season <clears throat> two is um, that it's it looked like it was going to be a one-off case, but then it seemed to end halfway. The, the episode ended halfway through the case. So whether it's not oh. them focusing more on the main the main story arc this year rather than. You know, like a monster, well, not monster of the week, but like yeah, serial yeah. killer of the week. So, mm. but yeah, definitely, definitely recommend worth a watch and really good cast and uh, beautifully shot, but really grotesque and ugly and yeah. you know disturbing and a bit, like a bit gross as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it for me, really. All right. Um, also, Liam, you mentioned uh, Grey's Anatomy came back this week. After my false announcement a month early. I'm so excited too early. <laughs> yeah, I was I was really, really excited for it come back and uh ended up quite disappointed with the comeback episode. Uh, everyone said that they loved it and everything, but I don't know, I won't spoil it too much, but the thing that happened in the mid season finale, it kind of happened off screen. Yeah. And I didn't like it. I, I thought I thought that should have been a big moment for them. With the uh, uh Right, spoilers. Uh, I'm just, I, I don't even care. Um, with, uh, Jackson and April, uh, getting married, I thought that should have been the pivotal scene, and that should have been the way it opened up, started with a bang. And I get into all this, the crap relationships that I don't really want to hear about, to be honest. I, I don't know. I'm a bit pessimistic about the rest of the season. It's just the interns. They, they just need They're to so get rid of the interns. Yeah. Dragging it down. Especially the guy, Shane. Oh, I Do you know, I really liked him, but I think it was more because of my love for Friday Night Lights that I liked him. He's uh, Smash Williams, and I can't remember what season he comes in in uh, Friday Night Lights, but he was good in that. The the um, Grace, the tall girl, she she is just awful. Yeah. <laughs> I, really, I, I wouldn't be wouldn't be bothered if they just killed her off screen and <laughs> said, ah, she left for another hospital or whatever. Yeah. 
Um, other than that, I continued watching Archer. Uh, that's, I don't know, I've been getting quite into my animated stuff this last couple of weeks. Um, Archer's really funny. It's really quite dark and for, for anyone that hasn't seen it, it's about a, um, like a really, I don't know, like a horrible version of James Bond. Like this super spy who's just a total arsehole, basically. <laughs> And just gets all up to all sorts of mischief while he's drunk, and it's funny. It's good. Yeah, I tried watching it because you recommended it because I like Bob's Burgers. Yeah, but I don't know. I think I, the the animation kind of annoyed me. I think I really need to I sit down and give it a go. But yeah, I don't quite like the. Funny you mentioned Bob's Burgers as well. They do a wee crossover episode at the start of season four yeah. that I really liked. Basically, it's him pretending to be like he walks into this role as Bob from Bob's Burgers, and it's just. Can I explain what happened between season three and four? Right. It's, uh, it's quite funny, but that's kind of the point I'm up to. Just now. I think I'm just maybe three or four episodes away, uh, away from the end of season four, um, and I'll need to find. I don't know if Channel Five have got season five on over here yet. I might just try and catch up on that as well. Um, Justified as well was really. Good. I remember Robbie saying a couple of weeks ago, "This is me just getting to catch up with it, like all the surprising deaths and things like that." and just the way it all turns out, it's really, really good. It's if you haven't watched Justified, it's probably one of the best shows on TV for me just now. Uh, one of the most underrated, anyway. It's like a kind of cop drama, but it's more than that. It's more kind of character focused on uh, Timothy Oliphant's uh, character, um, and it's got that whole kind of southern US thing about it. It's it's really cool. I like that. Um, I started watching. I bear with me in this one. Um, started watching on Netflix Adventure Time uh, with my wee sister. Oh yeah. Um, oh, I've heard about that. Do you know what? It's really fucking good. It's so funny. <laughs> um, it's a bit like The Simpsons, and there's references there that kids wouldn't get, and it's kind of for people our age, you know. Yeah, I've I've seen a few episodes of it, and I don't quite get the humour. Of it. Well, I mean, I get the humour, but I don't, it's not my, t- it's not yeah, my it's, kind of humour. But yeah. I like the, the little fantasy, because you know, they're only about, they're only 10, 15 minutes, aren't they, an episode. Yeah. And um, I like all the little fantasy adventures they go on, and I like I like that element of it. I just wish I found it a bit funnier. Yeah. That's just stopped me. You, you can just put it on the background. And it's, it's yeah, yeah, definitely. Watch. Yeah, cause, and there's, they've put, there's quite a few seasons of it, aren't there? Is there like, um, I, I say don't know. It's only the first one that's on Netflix. Oh, you might be right, I um well maybe not as many as ten. I think I was still watching Cartoon Network ten years ago and it hadn't <laughs> started yet, so maybe maybe six, six or seven. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like I say, it's really easy to watch and you can just throw it on and uh I am gonna be honest, I have watched a few episodes without my wee sister as well, so <laughs> <laughs> guilty pleasure there. Um what was the last thing? Oh someone convinced me this week to start watching anime again. Like the Japanese manga cartoons, and uh, I decided to watch one that everyone who likes it talks about, uh, Attack on Titan. It's, uh, I don't know, I take it you guys aren't uh, into it, into that kind of thing, no? I'm not, no. No, no uh, I've, I know a few of them, but I haven't heard of that one. It's, uh, that's like the the massive one just now, and uh, I put it on, I put on two episodes the other night, and I think I watched... I found out it was on Netflix yesterday, and I watched about 15 episodes this morning. Woke up really early at like half eight and just watched watched all of it, basically. A um, little bit ashamed about that, but it's so good, it's so addictive. Recommend to anyone, who, anyone on Netflix actually, gives that a try. Even if you're not into uh, the anime and all that, because I'm not really. But it's, it's really good, it's really quite creepy at the start, and then... So, um, what's the basic premise of it? It's kind of a fantasy world where all the humans live inside this big walled city. And uh, outside of it, it's these giant monster people things um, that eat humans. And um, something happens and it's like a big war that starts, basically. But it's it's more about the characters and all that as well. And how the story goes on from from where you think it's going to go. It kind of goes off on a tangent. It's It's really cool. Especially if you've, even if you like that kind of thing as a kid, like I used to watch Dragon Ball Z and all that when I was, yeah, when I was a bit younger. Um, it's that same kind of, like the fight scenes and all that 
all the action scenes are quite similar. But yeah, it's really cool. Um, should give it a try. If you're not addicted after the first episode, then you need to drop it. Uh, 20 minutes as well, so very easy to watch. Um, so we'll move on and we'll talk about our first topic, the movies that are going to be released in March. I haven't yep. done as March movies. That sounded much better. <laughs> um, so what what films are coming out this month that you guys quite fancy seeing? What are the, the ones Mupp- that you're the most Muppets. looking forward to? Muppets. Muppets, oh yeah, that's at the, the end of the month, isn't it? The 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 month. Month. Yeah, yes. yeah. Sadly, that's the only downside about it, is with Huge Beast is going to be... Oh, really? Good. I'm not a fan. Yeah. No, I'm not either. I, I, I always sound like I'm down on everything on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but no, I'm really excited about the Muppets. I loved the first movie. I thought it was fantastic. It took me back to my childhood, so I'm really looking forward to this. And Tina Fey's in it as well, and I really like oh, yeah. her from 30 Rock. Yeah. Um, so really looking forward to it, but yeah, it's just a shame Ricky Gervais is in it, but I can put up with him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he won't be in it very much. No, hopefully it's just a wee cameo, but I have a, fe- I have well, a feeling... I've been plugging it on fa- uh, Facebook and Twitter all week, so <laughs> I think he might be in it for a while. <laughs> yeah, I think he might be as well, but... And uh, probably the other one for me is Captain America. Yeah, I think everyone's looking forward to that, aren't they? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you... I Is it you that uh, had all the, the hate for Captain America last time? No, I d- I'm not interested in any of the Marvel films. Oh, no. So I've never seen any of the Iron Mans. Or, uh, oh, I've seen the Thors, um, but only because Natalie Portman's in them. <laughs> She's I, thought gonna only cause I, I thought you were only going to see because of Chris Hemsworth. No, 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 no. <laughs> Natalie Portman all the way. <laughs> That's why I watched them. <laughs> um, so no, I'm not got any interest I'm afraid in, uh, in Captain America. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> right, so what ones are you uh, buzzing for, Kit? Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, Under the Skin, which is out on the 14th of March, um, which is um, Jonathan Glazer's new, fi- well, new film. He hasn't done a film for about nine years. Um, <laughs> and it's set in, um, set in rural Scotland, and it just follows Scarlett Johansson, who's got like a dark brunette bob for this and uh, she plays this alien who um, travels around Scotland drives around Scotland in the car just like pick, like looking for like victims and picking up men to kind of seduce and then I think she either eats them or takes them back to her lair or something I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying not to read too much we won't go further than that <laughs> <laughs> family friendly and all I know. that well no it, yeah, it's probably a Good fifteen eighteen certificate, but um, <laughs> I haven't I haven't read too much about it. Uh, all I know is she's an alien, and it's rural Scotland, and it's very weird. And um, it premiered at Venice last year, and it got really good reviews. And people were saying, well, it kind of it was getting amazing reviews, but then it also had this. Um, it's got this tag of being a Marmite film, so you'll either love it or you'll hate it. So the people, mm. if you love it, you'll really love it. So that's why it was getting. It's getting a lot of yeah. five star reviews, but then it it got a few. You know, some people didn't get it either. So, was it um, filmed in Scotland? Yes, yeah. It's it based... was. Fun fact: it was actually filmed. Uh, well, some scenes of it were actually filmed in my work, and uh, oh, a couple wow. of my colleagues might have background extra roles. Really? I'm not yet. I've not seen it yet. And did you get to meet Scarlett Johansson? <laughs> uh, no, I was no. off the day she was filmed. Oh, oh yeah. damn! <laughs> That's a shame. I would have just come in. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, everyone else got to meet her. I'm so jealous. Oh, and Apparently she's tiny. And is she, and is she nice as well? Uh, yeah, no one really had anything bad to say about her. Yeah. But, uh, I can't, I can't attest to it personally. <laughs> well gutted. Uh, yeah, I quite fancy seeing that as well though. Um, yeah. It looks, it looks really good. I'm not sure how much of a wide release it's going to get, but um, I don't know, like, I think the... Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think what else is out on the 14th. Well, although Veronica Mars is out on the 14th. Although that's not yeah. getting a big release either, I don't think. Uh, um, probably not here. I think it's got a decent release off on the stage. Yeah, yeah. I think it, because I think there was some question about whether it was even going to get a theatric release over here, but I yeah. think it is. But I think it's not, I don't think many cinemas are picking it up. So maybe the big cities will get it. Yeah. Um, but actually it's not, it's not a very strong week that, so hopefully Under the Skin will get get a fair few cities and a fair few like Cine World might pick that one up so so yeah definitely looking forward to that one um, and I'm quite intrigued about the 300 sequel as well <laughs> which is uh, I think is it, it's out it's out on Friday isn't it so uh, um, yes, I think yes. So, yeah. so I think the um, I'm not sure if it's it might be one of these films that 
you know, some of the, if they don't screen for press, it's always a bad sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, if it has, um, we should start getting some reviews of it in the next few days, and uh, so we'll see if it's any good or not. But I really love the first one, and and I'm a big um, Zack Snyder apologist. Actually, I <laughs> I, I loved Sucker Punch, so <laughs> um, I will stick up for him. Although I won't stick up for Man of Steel because that was really disappointing, but I will stick up for him. And I really enjoyed 300. I saw it on the big screen, and I just was. I don't think it was 3D. I think it was just just 2D back then, and it was. I just remember being just transfixed by it, and. I just thought it was so beautifully shot, and and I and I studied classics, and so obviously it wasn't completely faithful to to, to history and to literature. Oh, no, and things. I didn't realize no, that. No, <laughs> it's, it's more about the action and things. But uh, I really enjoyed it, and and I really love Eva Green as well. So um, I might uh, I might take. Well, we'll see what the reviews are like. And I do tend yeah. to the ones that I'm not sure about. I, I tend to wait for the reviews. So. If it's getting a panning, then I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, it's one that I'm quite worried about. I'm guessing Jared Butler's not in this one. No, he's not. Yeah. I don't know who the I don't know who the male lead is in this one actually. Uh, is the girl from Game of Thrones, Lena Headey? Uh, in it? Yeah, she's in it. I know she was it. the original. Uh, she's a star in it, yeah. Yeah, she. I've seen her in the trailer, and then Eva Green is the main antagonist this time, I think. But I can't. All right. Okay. I can't think who the guy is who's in it. Um, it wasn't anyone I recognised, I don't think. So. Um, I don't know. I have time to go and look it up. I wish I'd known. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm pretty worried about it. I've got a feeling it might be a bit of a flop. Um, like you say, we'll we'll see what the what the reviews say. I think Stuart was picking that up for us. Okay. Um, this week. Um, there's a couple of films that I've seen already, which I just wanted to give a quick plug to. So, okay. um, there's a little tiny little film from. Um, Laos out on the 14th of March called The Rocket, which I saw at um, Leeds Film Festival last year, and it was my favourite film of the festival, and probably my favourite film of 2013. And it's just a lovely little film about, um, it's about a little boy who, um, he's kind of got this stigma in the family of being the bad luck child, and all the all these um, tragedies that happen to the family, everyone blames on him, and it's it's to do with like the cult the culture of the of the country, and yeah. but he knows in himself that you know he's not a bad person, and um, it's just about, about his family um, uh, moving from one settlement to try and, and find a new home, and throughout the course of this, um, he has to well he decides to enter this rocket competition to, to make your own like handmade rocket, and whichever one um, you know travels the furthest and explodes you know, the biggest um, wins a cash prize and I think some land as well. So he he enters it to try and make a better life for his family. But it's just a really cute little film and it's 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 kind of predictable but in a really nice way and I just I remember seeing it at Leeds and like when it finished everybody just, you know, applauded and there was just really good it's just a good feel in the cinema about it. So um, yeah. I don't think it'll get a big release but I just wanted to put a shout out to that one. Yeah, it'd be nice to see it on uh, a few a few cinemas. I, I like when indie films get a wee, yeah. a decent run in the in the cinemas. Yeah, it won at um, it won at Tribeca last year as well. So um, it's it's yeah. yeah, it's done a, it's done really well on the festival circuit. So now it's getting its official release in the UK. So definitely recommend people go and see that. And then on the twenty first, um, Labor Day's out as well, which is Jason Reitman's new film. Who did Juno and Up in the Air and um, Young Adult. And um, it's a bit of a change of pace because he's kind of he does really cool indie comedy dramas, and this one's more um, of a family drama in kind of almost it's almost a bit Spielbergian as well. So, um, and it stars Josh Brolin and, and Kate Winslet, and they're both really solid actors, and you can always rely on them, and they've got good chemistry in this. And it's just a nice little story, and. A, a, it's been getting a few lukewarm reviews, but I, I saw it at London Film Festival last year and really, really enjoyed it. So definitely check that one out as well. Do you know what the trailer for that just does not sell? It, oh my God, no, it doesn't. I saw it. It's, it's one of the worst trailers I've seen. <laughs> I know. I watched it. I saw it before. I hadn't seen the trailer um, since um, I went to see Dallas Buyers Club on Thursday and I got and the trailer for, for Labor Day was before that and it was... I just want, as soon as it had finished, I just wanted to stand up and just address everyone and say, it is not as bad as that trailer <laughs> suggests. It is really good. But, 
But... I really hope someone does that next day, man. With the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, ignore the trailer. Just, just go and watch it. It's really good. Okay, I'll give it a go. <laughs> um, the one that's uh, out same day as Three Hundred, like we were talking about before. Um, Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah. I I think I'm the only one of us who actually wanted to see that. I think it looks pretty funny. Uh, yeah, I I won't go off on my Wes Anderson rant, <laughs> <laughs> but I really liked Wes Anderson, and then I just think he's got a little bit too set in his ways now. He's a little bit yeah. too of that of his style, and um, I wish he'd just just change it up and just do something completely different. And this looks wasn't a big fan of Moonrise Kingdom. And uh, this looks his same kind of style. Um, it does look it does look funny and it does look better than Moonrise Kingdom. So we, I might be tempted to give it a go, but I just wish he'd just do something completely different. Um, like yeah. he, when he did Fantastic Mr. Fox, which was I don't know if if you guys have seen that, which this kind of stop motion animated. Um, no, I've, I've not seen it. It's just it's really really good, and it's his kind of humour and and style. But but just different because it's animated and it's you know the Roald Dahl book. So I think he's I do think he's a bit better sometimes when it's he's not working off his own script. But um, we'll see we'll see. It's got a really good cast, hasn't it? Um, yes, it does. I, I forget who is in it right now, oh, but I know it lists, does have a good lists and lists of people. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing it um, and been pretty impressed. Um, the other one. Again, you've brought it up before. Uh, Veronica Mars. That's that's my my top priority this uh, this month. Um, I love the TV show. I've done a few pieces for it on the site, I think, actually. But like you say, it wasn't really due a a massive release here, and uh, obviously a lot of controversy because it was like one of the big budget Kickstarter projects. Yeah. So we'll we'll see how it does. But I, I think it looks pretty decent from the trailers and all that. And basically just that an hour and a half to an episode of the show, I think. Which isn't a bad thing. Very good show. You should t- uh, check it out if you've not seen it before. Um, kind of teen detective thing with uh, Kristen Bell from Frozen. And uh, forget Sarah Marshall and all that as well. Yeah, I've, I've had it recommended to me countless times. But um just never got round to it. It's only two seasons as well, isn't it? So. Uh, no, it's... Is it three? Four seasons, I think. Oh, okay. I Maybe was, three. I thought it was three. Maybe it's three. But it's it's a little bit like uh, elementary, actually. It's that same, well, similar kind of style. A bit more, a bit more CW than what elementary is, obviously. But, uh, yeah, it's good. So, obviously, with that, getting a, a remake as a movie, uh, might be a good segue for us to move on to talk about heroes coming back. Yeah. What, what do we think about that? Why? Liam, I know you want to you want to talk about it. Just why? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is my that's my well. It's all I've got to see. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't know. I really liked the first season, and like everyone says, it went rapidly downhill after that. And I can't really say I was sitting on my sofa going, "Ooh, I really wish they'd bring Heroes back." Like Twenty Four is coming back. Quite happy about that. Quite happy to watch another kind of little series of Twenty Four because I think probably could do more stuff but I, I, yeah i can't really say i was thinking going oh i really wish i could bring heroes back i just i just don't see the point really I, why just why <laughs> and plus although it it has the potential because if they're going to bring in a new lot of cast because i must admit by the end i didn't like siler or claire or yeah. any of them i thought they were all really annoying so maybe if it's a new cast and maybe and if it's shorter they won't have to have so much filler so it has the potential but yeah i just I'll I'll wait and see, but yeah, I just can't really see. I understand the logic behind it all, to be honest. Well, I think that was the the original vision they had was to change the cast every year, like just yeah. do completely new scenarios, sort of thing. Yeah, like an American Horror Story type. Thing. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, um, and because everyone loved the loved Siler and Hero and all that, they just decided to run with that, and it went a bit shitty. Just a little. Do you know what? I, I think I'm one of the five people that actually watched it all the way to the end. And it was it was cool seeing guys like Robert Nepper popping up and um, folks like that, like that you see elsewhere on TV. But it just wasn't good. Um, the the way they flip flopped, uh, like with some of the cast members, like uh, Silas a baddie, and then now he's a goodie, and then now he's a baddie again. It's 
it got really old really fast and uh the hero becoming basically a, a kind of cartoon version of him um I didn't like that either um there was there was too many things they done wrong um yeah they just gave them I think they made them all just too kind of powerful like hero yeah, could kind of stop yeah. time and everything and Siler could do everything and you and he and Claire couldn't die and then it just kind of got to the point where you were like well you know it just it, they all got to kind of too big and you just thought well where's the yeah. kind of drama behind it all because and then like you say they all kind of changed from week to week really it felt at one point they just kind of changed the characters yeah um but I'm I'm pretty excited about, about seeing it coming back um especially as a web series I think it will you know what I'm like my web series I, <laughs> I like to get a bit of publicity um so I, I think it will kind of turn more attention to that market maybe maybe because I know they did run a, a web series when the show was on, and it was, I don't know, it was really weird, it was like a like a comic version, wasn't it? I, I don't know if any of you actually seen it, but uh, it was quite well hidden away on the um, on the network's site, um, but it, it seemed like a bit of a waste of time. I just hope that uh, the new version doesn't go the same way. So it's maybe if it's now, like, you see web, like you've talked about, like, on the podcast, the other month, the other week, even um, how like web series are quite the end thing at the moment. Maybe mm-hmm. they'll do a better job of it. Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, I don't know. Does it make you guys think of other shows that you kind of think you wish they'd bring back or think they should bring back as kind of mini, mini series? Is there anything you think? Ooh, I wish they'd bring that back. Veronica Mars was always the one that I wanted. Uh, like the the end of the season three DVD, they had like a wee kind of mini bit of her going to join the FBI and all that and. I think everyone wanted to see that coming back as a as a mini series, but obviously the movie coming out. Um, maybe maybe Friends. Uh, obviously that's too big budget for something like that, but I think just for a bit of extra closure that people want. I mean, everyone wants to see it coming back, don't they? But I think they just need a like a final nail in the coffin for it. You know, I don't know. I think it'd be. I think sitcoms are probably easier for it, but then it's finding one that fits that. That situation, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's quite interesting how, obviously, they've brought 24 back as an event series, and, like, this event series is, like, the new thing in American television now, it seems. So, but, you know, 24 hasn't even aired yet, but, you know, NBC, I think, have just seen how well it's been received and gone, oh, what can we do for an event special? So, they've, you know, I don't know whether... They've always, pl- you know, it's been brewing for a while to bring it back, or whether they've, you know, they just want to do this uh, this event mini series type thing, and they've they've looked back through their programs and, and thought, what can what can we bring back? And I think Tim yeah. Tim Kring did Touch, didn't he? And that didn't go anywhere. Yeah. So uh, so it's a bit of a shame. He's like, oh, I'm gonna have to go back to the one thing that was vaguely successful. For me. And it's like, why don't you think of something else? But. <laughs> But yeah, it's because I know um, uh, Fox are doing another one as well, aren't they? With um, M Night Shyamalan as well. Yeah, I think he's yeah. doing um, like a Twin Peaks type show. So uh, whenever anyone says Twin Peaks, I'm interested. But I do wonder whether they just throw that in there to get people to get people watching, and then it's not going to be anything like the quality of Twin Peaks and the weirdness of Twin Peaks. Whenever anyone mentions M Night Shyamalan, uh, that I'm just automatically not interested. <laughs> Well, true, yeah. <laughs> Bit of a boring killer, isn't it? <laughs> so, are they, is this going to be? Um, so, are they bringing back a? Are they bringing back any of the original cast, or are they? Um, is this a brand new cast, or are they not? Re- they haven't said yeah. yet. I think, I think the plan is to have it as new cast. I'm like Stu's saying about the web episodes. They're going to use them to introduce them before it actually airs. Yeah. But, um, and then they've said that the new, like the old cast, might pop up. Every now and again, but I suppose it depends what they're all up to. Because I mean, Siler or Zachary Quinto is now off being Spock. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. a bit too big for it, isn't he? And um, Hero's now on Hawaii Five-O, I think. I guess guys like uh, Greg Runberg and uh, Milo Ventimiglia. Don't know how you say his name. Um, Peter Petrelli, basically. Mm. Uh, I I think they could probably come back and do it, but most of the the big ones, maybe not. That, that's one of those shows like Lost that you just you wonder whatever happened to some of the cast, don't you? Yeah. Like, uh, whatever happened to uh, the blonde woman, Ali Larter? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, she just disappeared. She went, uh, she went into an episode of Entourage and then never heard from her again. <laughs> uh, she was famous for doing Legally Blonde, wasn't she? Yeah, she was in that. Was she not in a Resident Evil film? Did I make that up? Um, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they've all just gone into terrible film roles. Yeah, Resident Evil films bombs. Oh no, Nathan uh, Petrelli, can't remember who the actor's name, he pops up in one of the Amazon pilots that Amazon are doing. He's one of them in that, basically playing Nathan Petrelli, but he can't fly, <laughs> really. Um, so he's in that, so I don't know if he's that much. Mm-hmm. And Claire's obviously in Nashville now. You know, country yeah. yeah, she's been on it, have a decent, uh, pretty decent career. And now uh, married to Vladimir Klitschko, isn't she? The boxer? Am I making that up? If you say so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm pretty know. sure she is. One, one of them anyway, maybe, uh, maybe another one. Um, but with that, uh, getting a reboot, I thought it'd be kind of appropriate to bring up The Matrix possibly getting a reboot as well. Um, people have been talking about the... I don't know if it's an extended trilogy or a remake trilogy or um, just a completely new trilogy in the same universe. But that's one that I'd be quite interested to see. Because although the... I mean, have you guys seen the, the original Matrix trilogy? Yeah. I haven't. <laughs> How could you miss that? Theme? Well, no. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> it's dead. No, it's not It's not anything I'm interested in. So I get the Fair same enough. reactions. But, uh... <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know if... The second and third films were a lot worse than the first. A lot uh, worse than the first. A lot worse, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if it's worth... Continuing on from that, or to go to a different character who is also the one, or or what I don't know. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what they do with it anyway. If they decide, I mean, this is all just rumours, but a few sources reported it, so I figured it might be. It's worth mentioning anyway. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'd be a bit more popular if Keanu Reeves wasn't in it. Yeah, a lot of hate for the guy. I quite like him, but uh, he is very bland, isn't he? Very. I think it's the same as Heroes for me. I just wonder why, why they would need to bring it back. Again, I can't really say that people are sitting here thinking, ooh, I really wish they'd do a new Matrix trilogy. Yeah, it's a bit mm. like, it made me think of um, them redoing the Spider-Man films now as well. It still seems too recent from um, from the Tobey Maguire films. and I'm sure yeah. the Matrix was only 10 or so years ago, wasn't it? So, um, yeah. 2004 yeah. was the last one, I think. Is that yeah, right? so, yeah, ten years ago. But I, I kind of, I see why they're doing it because obviously the last two in the series flopped. I think it, it's a better story than what those two show off. I think it deserves something better. But when do you ever get reboots that are better? It's not a very good conversion rate, is it? No. Although to be fair, the new Spider-Man movie I think is better than the Tobey Maguire ones. Yeah, I... I, I agree, though. I don't know why they did it, but... No, I think the characters are better, but you you, kn- you knew the story, didn't you? And you knew where it yeah. was going, so... Uh, yeah. But, yeah, no, I, I did like... Um, I, I prefer Andrew Garfield to, to Tobey Maguire, definitely. <laughs> um, so, should we move on to talk about the Oscars? Yes, so it's cool. the um, it's the day after the Oscars. I'm still really tired. <laughs> <laughs> did you sit up and watch it? I did, yes. Um I uh, I don't have Sky or E or anything fancy like that, so it was all online streams. Um, so it's very kind of hit and miss, really, with what you get. So it kind of it started off because you start off with the red carpet, obviously, and it was with E for a bit, and then it switched to ABC, which I guess is fine. I'm not really a big fan of E and Kelly Osbourne talking about all the fashions and yeah. all these uh, Ryan Seacrest and oh, I can't remember what the main woman's name is, but he does these terrible inane interviews, and you're just like, but. Um, uh, I thought the red carpet was a bit dull this year. Actually, it was it was just kind of nice. It was you know everyone was in kind of nice dresses and and the men were in kind of you know have you know there was a lot of white tuxedos this year and it was uh, it was just nice. There wasn't any anything outrageous and I don't know. It just seemed to drag and drag the red carpet and then you get to the you get to the ceremony which kicks off about half one in the morning our time in the UK. And it's just like, <laughs> we're only at the beginning, we've got the whole show to go yet. And, uh, but I actually thought um, Ellen DeGeneres is the, the host. I thought she was really funny, actually. I know she's, it's, there's been her mixed reactions to, to her hosting style, but I, I really liked her opening monologue, and that 
coffee cheered me, you know, woke me back up and cheered me back up and got me in the mood for for the long slog. And uh, I just really liked the way she just, her hosting style was just really just like hanging out in the audience and chatting to like um, Meryl Streep and Liza Minnelli and Julia Roberts and um, Jared Leto. And um, I loved when, I'm sure you've all seen the selfie that she did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was just amazing because it was initially just her and Meryl and then Julia was like, oh, Julia Roberts was like, oh, I'll get Julia, like I know her. <laughs> <laughs> Julia Roberts was like, oh, I'll join in and then everybody kind of joined in and just seeing it happen live on TV was uh, was just good fun and then she was like, oh, let's, you know, see if we can get the most retweets and so I, I, I joined in I was one of those horrible people that retweeted it but... Uh, <laughs> I think it's had like two, two, nearly three million retweets now, so it's just Jeez crazy. Not. Yeah, it was a really nice pick. So, um, and then I really liked the way she ordered pizza for everybody. Yeah, and I was going to uh, see that. I saw that. I thought that was <laughs> yeah. cool. There, there was a great bit where she was handing it all out, and because um, she did a bit beforehand where she was like, "Who wants pizza?" and people put their hands up, and she was noting them all down <laughs> and stuff. And um, and Harrison Ford was like, put his hand up, and was like, "I want some pizza." And then uh, when she was passing it I around, a Harrison Ford impression, by the way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I would like some pizza. And um, but when he when he got the pizza, he like pointedly took the slice of pizza and then stopped it all so he could get a napkin as well. I was like, oh, he needs a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> it just made me laugh. And, uh, I think Jared Leto got some for his mum and uh, Jamie Foxx got some for his daughter. So uh, it was just really nice. I, I really liked it. I really liked that kind of, you know, she didn't need to stand up and do song and dance numbers. And, uh, yeah. and, and she was a lot better than Seth MacFarlane last year. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't very good, was he? No, it was just a bit awkward to watch. And yeah, no, it's but, not really that kind of audience, is it? No, not I don't think. Like no, you. and uh, I mean bits of it worked, but I think she overall was just a lot funnier. And um, so I really enjoyed her, her as host. And um, but what about you guys? Did you, so you neither of you stayed up for it, I presume? No. I had work today, so I couldn't get up for it. But, I mean, I've seen the pictures and obviously that, and yeah, kind of, it looked like it would, look like it would be a good laugh, kind of being there, like, and it makes you kind of think, quite nice to see them all kind of being kind of regular, like, fighting over pizza and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Uh, see, I usually like watching all the red carpet stuff, like you say. Yeah, who's, so do I. Yeah. Who's going mental with uh, what they're wearing and <laughs> uh, all that daft stuff, but uh, I, I don't know, I just wasn't up for it this year. I, I felt like it was going to be a bit predictable. Uh, and plus, I had to get up early to watch Attack on Titan, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. Um, uh, what do you think of the, the folks who won, like, all the kind of major awards? I mean, 12 Years a Slave was pretty obviously going to win the... Well, well it was, that was a really interesting one, actually, because if you, throughout the ceremony, um, obviously they, they start off with, um, they start off with Best Supporting Actors. So they do, they always do a big one straight away. Um, but then after that, you get into the more technical character um, categories. So you get into hair and makeup and visual effects and um, production design and things. And every single award that Gravity was nominated for, it was winning, and it just it was picking up this momentum. Um, and then there's there's an award for um, best editing, which is kind of it's one of these awards where there's loads of statistics about how generally the film that wins for best editing will win best picture um, so when Gravity picked that up there was a lot of like oh oh is it going to win best picture and then I think it won um, well obviously Alfonso Cron picked up best director which was kind of a given anyway but there just seemed to be when it came to best picture there was a you could just feel there's a bit more tension like or oh, is it going to be Gravity or will it still be 12 years a slave so and I was, I, I just thought, I think Gravity might actually take it. But then, but then, 12 Years a Slave came kind of a, in a way out of nowhere and, uh, and took it. So, uh, but I think it was, uh, I think it was the right choice. I think I was really pleased that one. But then I would have been pleased for Gravity as well, actually. Yeah, you can't really, looking at the list, you can't really argue with any of them, can you? No. Um, maybe, maybe a bit of a shock that Dallas Buyers Club didn't get the best original screenplay. That was, uh, her. That, that got that. Yeah. Which, to be fair, I really liked her. I thought that was really well written. Yeah, and I think it was a popular win as well, Spike Jones winning that. So, uh, yeah. uh, now I was really pleased with all the winners actually. I was really pleased for Lupita Nyongo. Um, really pleased she won it because I know 
it was between her and Jennifer Lawrence, and yeah. I am not the biggest fan of Jennifer Lawrence, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, I haven't seen, I haven't seen American Hustle, but, um, she, Lupita Nyong'o is amazing in 12 Years a Slave, and she just seems just, just really lovely and down to earth, and, um, just not, not, she hasn't been taken in by the hot, She's not Hollywood eyes yet, you know. She's a fresh face, and uh, yeah. and she just and she was really her speech was really lovely as well. She just really charming and um and just just completely overwhelmed and excited and happy for for everything that was happening. Um, you know that that that's happened to her during award season. So um, I thought that was really lovely, and um, and I'm really pleased with Matthew McConaughey as well. I kind yeah, of, we're talking a little bit about uh, Matthew McConaughey's speech. Yeah, I really liked his speech. I just thought it was. I just think he. I, just, I think. I don't know. His his accent just makes him quite charming, anyway. And I just think it's. I know he was basically saying that his hero was himself, and a lot of people. <laughs> and and then and yeah, we talked about how he didn't mention um, Jared Leto made a point, and actually. Um, I think it was uh, hair and makeup. I think it won for as well. And the 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 girls who did that made a point of thanking all the um, uh, well, not thanking, but um, making a point to mention um, the victims of the AIDS virus and, and yeah. HIV, and you know how important the film was, and and to tell their story. And Matthew McConaughey didn't mention any of that. It was pretty much all about his award and you know who who he looks up to and who he wants to thank and. And yeah. thank God as well. It was quite a. He was the only one who, who made it a bit, you know, went the religious route yeah. um, for the speech. But I, I thought, I thought he was really charming, and I really liked it. And I was, and he is really good in that film. So I've got no complaints really. Let me ask you to think. Uh, you said the supporting actor was the first award up, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. I think Do you think first if uh, if Jared Leto hadn't made that speech, uh, like done the whole kind of, uh, uh, charity angle of it? Do you think it would have went down the same, like the same kind of controversy for McConaughey? That's what I was going to say. Um, and and it, well, that made me think maybe he thought, you know, it's they've already been mentioned. You know, Jared yeah. Leto's already mentioned them, and the and the hair makeup girls have already mentioned it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's they. I'm sure they rehearsed their speeches, and he knew what he wanted to say. But I can also imagine. You know, you forget so many things while you're up there because it's so overwhelming. And whether he meant to mention them, and just you know forgot, or you know, yeah. was, you know, because I think I think when they go up there, I think they they're given um, on the teleprompter thing. I think they're given like a, their time limit to speak or something. Ah, right. right. So because um, some of them are like, oh, I've got forty seconds, and I've got to say this and this and this. So yeah, whether he sense. was, I don't know. So um, is it his first Oscar? It so, is, yes. Uh, I was just saying, maybe that's as well. He was getting all like excited. Yeah. It's his yeah. first one, and obviously ha- having his big reconnaissance. Yes. <laughs> on about, he was looking a bit excited. I know. I like to think he's also one for true detectives because <laughs> he's so good in that. Uh, what do you think about John Travolta? Because I've read that John Travolta <laughs> pronounced. Um, yes. I'm going to say her name right. Edina Menzel's name. Uh, Edina Menzel. Menzel yeah. yeah. He yeah, called her. He called it, well, he kind of mumbled it a little bit, but it, it was quite clearly Adela Dezim called her. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he was like the, the wicked, the wickedly amazing and talented and the only Adela Dezim. <laughs> and it was just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and quite me and my ignorance, I was like, oh, well, maybe that's how you pronounce her name. And then Twitter was like, he totally fucked up. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but I loved how she's changed her Twitter name to that now. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's just changed her whole Twitter name and her Twitter handle to Adela Dezim. So she's obviously clearly taken it really well. So. Well, that's good. At least she's not been insulted by her. Anything, no, so. no, no, no. Like and I haven't I haven't heard um, John Travolta's reaction to it at all. So. <laughs> no. But yeah, there's some great vi- uh, vines and gifts of it. So. <laughs> it's quite hypnotic to watch, really. It's like he just keeps saying it over and over again. <laughs> Surely you would, you rehearse who you, you know. You've just got that one, that one person to announce. You would learn their name. So. <laughs> I was definitely going to link up the uh, veins of it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> People need to see this. <laughs> oh, and I was, I was really excited for her performance, Let It Go, as well, and it, that one best song as well yes. from Frozen, because. Uh, 
do like a bit of the Frozen soundtrack. So. It's the yeah. only film I've probably seen at the Oscar lot, and I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and of course, it, it, it won Best Animated Film. Yeah. Well. Uh, was it the full cast that were? No, no, performing? it was just her. So she That's voices her. Um, Elsa, who, yeah. who performs it in the film. So, um, uh, no, it was just her. Because uh, I know Kristen Bell and uh, a few of the other guys from it were. Yeah, they were there. Uh, yeah. Doing it as something else. I know they all done a. A wee, a wee uh, song from it. Uh, that sounded really, really horrible, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I know. But yeah, I know they, um, I think Kristen Bell presented an award from my fuzzy memory. I'm sure she did. Um, but no, it was just um, Adina Menzel. Oh, sorry, oh, right. Adela Dazeem <laughs> <laughs> performing uh, performing the song. So, and it was, she I, she was really nervous as well, which was a shame. I mean, it was a really great performance, but. She could tell she was rushing it a little bit, and her pacing was a little bit off. Yeah, Which I read that she was a bit pitchy in that. I mean, I haven't seen it yet because I tried to find yeah, it on YouTube, and it's I can't find it anywhere. But um, I've heard that she was a bit pitchy at some point. Yeah, but. towards the end, because there's so many high notes towards the end as well, and um, mm. and obviously I mean, she she, had, she kind of just had to pace herself, you know, toward you know at the beginning she had to kind of you know to keep her breath and everything, but um. She just seemed a bit. I've I've, I've read that um, the orchestra were backstage, or they were in a slightly different room. So whether she couldn't quite hear the backing track, she just seemed oh, like right. just a bit ahead of everyone, and her pacing was just a little bit off. But whether she was just, just really nervous, I don't know. But it was fine. It was just you know when you really love the song and you know you know you've listened to it so much. <laughs> Hands up, it's me. <laughs> um, you know that like, every single moment, and you're just like, oh, she's quick, she's ahead of that there, and you know. Yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, I, I can't imagine performing to like millions of viewers. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a bit surprised by that because she's a, a big, a huge Broadway star, isn't she? She's done that plenty yeah. of times before, surely. Yeah. I can't see her being nervous. I think. Well, I suppose maybe it's different between Broadway's what. I mean, I don't know how many you can get in a theatre, but yeah, well, I mean, a know, thousand people and there's millions of people and watching. watching. Yeah, it's, it's yeah I it. guess. And just it's on Glee as well, though, so it's not. It's not really as if she's not used to being on camera. Or what I know, live is obviously completely different, but yeah, I think it's just the live element of it, and uh, just knowing that. You've just, I mean, imagine looking down at the front row and you've got. Matthew McConaughey and Jared Leto and Leonardo DiCaprio are looking at you and you just probably freak out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, was there any other kind of controversies at it? Um, no, not really. Um, no? Nothing. That's a bit of a shame. I, I like a bit of a, a Bob Sennway controversy. Yeah. And also quite been a, quite a few photo bombs. Like there's the one of Benedict uh, yeah. Batch yes. behind you too and all that. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, your favourite friend. <laughs> no, but Stu, it's great. It's so good. <laughs> it's a good photo. And I think there's one with Jared Leto and... Lupita Nyong'o. Yeah, oh. I think it's Anne Hathaway. I think she's going to have a photo taken, and he pops up. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's another one where there's another one where he's being interviewed, and Lupita Nyong'o's photo bombing him. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be the theme of this year: photo bombing and selfies. Yeah, we'll put a few of them in uh, in the link dump as well, yeah. so that everyone can see them just in case they they miss them on uh, bigger sites that we won't mention. Um, I don't know. Was there any any other topics that we want to bring up? Not about shorter than usual, but um, I think an hour's still plenty of time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah. So that's everything, we'll uh, isn't it? wrap it up then. So thanks very much, guys, for coming on. Um, you can follow Liam at underscore no crisp underscore packet. Yeah, that's right. Yep, that's the one. Yeah, uh, crisp underscore packet on Twitter, and you can follow Kate on Twitter at underscore culture mouse. Yeah, at underscore culture mouse, yeah. No, not the other culture mouse. No. That's the culture mouse. <laughs> Fuck them. Someone um, pretending to be Kate. <laughs> yeah, indeed, my name <laughs> Um And don't forget, you can follow the site on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google Plus, if you just search TV and Film Review. And you, Stu, um, you can follow you as well. I'm not mentioned yourself. Well, I am at the Stu Dog. Everybody should know that by now. It's because, it, yeah, everybody <laughs> just knows. It's in there, ingrained into their consciousness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, at the studio, you can follow me on Twitter if you fancy that. Um, what did I get to? YouTube as well, you can follow uh, follow stuff on YouTube. We're starting to put a little bit more on, um, tying it in with the 
best of the web series and podcast, obviously. I'm having a bit of trouble with YouTube where we can't upload the podcast, but I've got it on my channel and I'm putting it onto the uh, TV and film review one, so we will still have it there. Um, it'll all be tied in. And hopefully we'll have some videos from, we're going down to Newcastle Comic Con this weekend. Uh, we'll hopefully have some content to put up from that as well. Um, try to get some interviews with some uh, superheroes and uh, I don't know, other uh, yeah, dwarves and Game of Thrones characters and things like that. Uh, and if you're um, going to be so there, also try and find us and say hello. Somewhat. I was going to say, if people are going to be there, it'd be good for them to try and find us and say hello. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Um, well, we'll be hunting people down anyway, so don't, don't worry too much about that. <laughs> <laughs> we will get you if you're there. That sounds threatening. <laughs> um, yeah, you can, uh, hopefully you're already subscribed on iTunes. That's apparently the one that matters. Um, but if not, you can search TVFR and you'll get us there and click the big subscribe button. Um, you can get us on Bandcamp as well at tvandfilmreview.bandcamp.com. It's like a high quality MP3 download. And I think that's it. So, yeah, thanks very much again, guys. And we'll hopefully uh, see you next week if you fancy coming on. Um, and I'll need... To- oh, wait, wait, wait. Theme song. What theme song are we having this week? Um, how about some... Let- he- Heroes one's a bit shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, it is, isn't it? What about some Let It Go? <laughs> oh, that's... Oh, oh yeah. wait, 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 wait. I'll put that on YouTube, it'll get flagged. Um, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it and see what happens. Um, Maybe it'll be on too late until <laughs> for them to catch it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll figure it out. I'll find something. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much for listening, folks. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Right, Domino's Pizza. Take a fresh look.